Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical exponential equation. We have x to the power cube root of x equals the cube root of x to the power x. Well, looks like I'm going to be presenting about two methods. Let's see how that goes. First, I want to notice that this number here, this expression right here, is the same as this one. So it's kind of like this equation is in the form x to the power y equals y to the power x. Make sense? Okay. So from here, we can kind of do the following. And we've done, I think I've done a video on this type of equation before. These types of equations are pretty interesting. As you know, with integers, uh, there's only one pair of solutions where x and y are different. Hopefully you can find it. And when x and y are not necessarily integers, then you obviously have infinitely many solutions. But one of the methods that we used was uh, assuming that y can be written as kx. And then once we replace x with kx, we get something like x to the power kx equals kx to the power x. And then we can kind of write this as x to the power k to the power x equals kx to the power x. And then raising both sides to the power 1 over x, of course, in this case, you don't want x to be 0. And if x is equal to 0, you can kind of look at it. y should also be 0. But does 0, 0 satisfy this original equation? 0 to the power 0 equals 0 to the power 0. Obvious, right? Whatever that is. I know some people claim that it's 0. I think it's 1, in my opinion. And we made a video on that one too. Anyways, so let's go ahead and get back to this. From here, we can basically erase the x's and then end up with something like x to the k equals kx and then divide both sides by x, x to the power k minus 1 equals k and then finally raise both sides to the power 1 over k minus 1, x becomes k to the power 1 over k minus 1. And since y is equal to kx, you can basically replace x with that, k times k to the power 1 over k minus 1, this is 1. If you add these two numbers, you get k over k minus 1. So y becomes k to the power k over k minus 1. Something interesting about this solution, like this pair of uh, variables, is that y is not only k times x, but it's also x to the power k. Make sense? Take a look. Okay. Anyways, uh, and from here, obviously, what are we finding? We're finding x and y. And then... You know, we can just replace, um, let's see, what am I trying to get at? Okay, here we go. This is the y value. So y is equal to cube root of x. And you can kind of write y as cube root of x. But at the same time, we assume that y can be written as k times x. And from here, basically, you can solve for x in terms of k, so on and so forth. Anyways, this is just one way to approach this problem. Obviously, this is not the best method. And it's probably not very... Uh, you know, elegant. Anyways, there's just one way to approach it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the more usual method. All right, so we have x to the power cube root of x equals cube root of x to the power x. Okay, now, so this problem isn't that complicated because we only have a single variable. And x to the power um, cube root of x can be uh, written as, actually, cube root of x can be written as x to the power one third. That's what I was trying to say. So x to the power cube root of x equals x to the power one third, and then that to the power x. And this gives us something very easy to handle, because now this becomes x to the power one over three x, or you can just write it as x over three. At this point, we kind of need to think about a couple different things, like can x be zero, can x be one, so on and so forth. You can also put everything on the same side, like divide by x to the power x over 3. That gives you 1. And then by way of subtraction, you get x to the power cube root of x minus x over 3 equals 1. And then you can kind of look at, you know, different scenarios. Like, when can I get 1 from a to the power b? Of course, there are some requirements, right? Uh, a needs to be positive, so on and so forth. But we can basically a equals 1, and we don't care about b, a equals negative 1, and then in this case, b, b needs to be even, an even integer, and b can be 0. 
Now, again, we kind of run into the 0 to the power 0 situation. I know some people are not going to accept the fact that 0 to the power 0 equals 1, but that's okay. I'm just going to take it as 1 and use b equals 0. But what is b? What is a? a is the base. So this first one gives us x equals 0. And now if x is equal to negative 1, obviously this is not going to be an integer, right? Because of the x over 3. So this solution is not going to work. And then b equals 0 is just going to give us cube root of x minus x over 3 equals 0, which means cube root of x equals x over 3. Now, from here, what are we getting? We're getting two solutions. One of them is x equals 0. And how could we possibly get that? We could just go ahead and cube both sides. Let's do it. If you cube both sides, you're going to get x equals x over 3 cubed. And then uh, we can kind of cube this x cubed over 27. Instead of um, dividing by x or canceling out the x's, let's just go ahead and put everything on the same side, subtract x, and then factor out an x, and you're going to get x squared over 27 minus 1 equals 0. And from here, we get the following. x equals 0, obviously, is going to follow. And then the other solution is going to come from here. This gives us x squared equals 27. Is that a surprise? Well, that just means that x is equal to the square root of 27, but there are two possible values. Let's consider both of them. If you use square root 27, you're going to get 3 root 3 or negative 3 root 3. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not talking about the square root of 27, the negative square root of 27. Okay? Now, do you think both of these solutions will satisfy the original equation? We need to check. Okay? x equals 0 is going to give us 0 to the power 0 equals 0 to the power 0. Hopefully, you believe that is correct, even though you may claim that 0 to the power 0 does not equal 1. Anyways, but our original equation was x to the power cube root of x equals cube root of x to the power x. If you replace x with cube root of 3 root 3, I think that's going to work, probably. But let's go with the negative solution because negative solution might fail. That's more likely. If you replace x with negative 3 root 3, and then you raise it to the power cube root of x. So what is the cube root of x? So it's going to be the cube root of 3 root 3 with a negative sign. And then on the right-hand side, we have the cube root of negative 3 root 3, and then it's raised to the power negative 3 root 3. How do you simplify something like this? That's going to be an interesting, um, you know, thing to do, but um, you can basically write all of these as powers of 3. For example, this could be written as negative 3 to the power uh, 3 halves, right, because of the 1 half. And then that raised to another power, you can kind of apply the powers and see if that solution is going to work. I'm going to leave it at that and look at the solution. Ta-da! Integer solution and I get a numerical solution. By the way, Wolfram Alpha doesn't provide the negative solution. That Does that work? And here's the graph of these two functions. Obviously, we're talking about the positive x values when it comes to graphing these exponentials. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.